This orangutan, a rare and endangered species of primates on Borneo Island, sits comfortably on top of a laran tree, one of thousands planted as part of a statewide action to enrich degraded forest areas. This action is taken to ensure that wildlife such as this orangutan, now advanced in age and no longer as agile and healthy as the younger ones nearby, can enter into happy retirement without hindrance. There is no longer a need for him to move about much, as the fruit and young leaves of the laran trees provide adequate food for him and other creatures in the wild. Vast areas of Sabas forests are degraded due to poor logging practices of the past, leaving the forests with little chance for natural regeneration. If nothing were to be done to correct the wrongs of the past, there is certainly a gloomy future ahead for Sabas rainforests, and there remains only a situation of degeneration. However, the Saba state government would not allow this to happen. It has embarked on a comprehensive plan to establish and administer a series of forest management units, popularly known in short as the FMUs, throughout the state. This is done in order to ensure that, eventually, internationally certified and well-managed forests shall emerge in most parts of the state. The government has found the Dramakot Forest Reserve as a model for the FMUs. The FMU concept is actually a follow-up on that world-class model we have, which is Dramakot. Dramakot, as we all know, is the first tropical forest in the world that has been certified under the gold standard of the FSC, which is the Forest Stewardship Council. By being certified as well managed in 1997, it means the drama code has fulfilled the requirements of sustainability, but drama code is only 55,000 hectares. And Sabah has about 3.6 million hectares of forest. And we know that you need tremendous resources to multiply this concept of drama code. That's why in 1997, the government took the decision to engage the private sector to come together with us as partners to multiply this concept. In the beginning, there were 10 FMUs when the bold step was taken in 1997. Now there are 21 FMUs spread around the state. Soon, this number shall increase as the concept is better understood, accepted, and it spreads to cover other forests. But of course, the areas that were given out to them are not necessarily of the equal quality or quantity as drama could itself. Therefore, we have allowed some adjustments whereby, apart from taking care of the sustainability part of it, the environmental part of it, and of course community work, there is this element of ITP or industrial tree plantations where the licensee is allowed to grow fast-growing, high-quality trees in a small percentage of the total FMU area, which is maybe about 10 to 15% while at the same time looking after the natural forest managed areas and looking after the conservation areas. These ITP areas will form the bulk of the income of the licensee and of course the government of Sabah in time to come. In the year 2008, there was an upsurge in performance, whereby a total of 10 out of 18 FMUs then received their certificate of compliance for that year, the best so far. And what is the success story? The success has been mixed, of course, but it has been on a progressive scale. If you look at those people who have been given the compliance certificate each year, this has been on an upward trend. But seriously, over time, the government would have no choice but to terminate the licenses of two or three FMUs that basically are at a standstill and for various reasons have not been performing at all. Some of the chosen private sector partners simply do not have the capacity to deliver due to the lack of commitment and capital. They are just too weak to carry on. By contrast, there are those that have performed very well, having full commitment the financial resources and with the capacity to deliver and fulfill the FMU agreement. One of these private sector partners is KTS Plantation Sindir and Bahad at Sagalud Lokan Forest Reserve. 
In December 2009, it has become the first long-term licensee in Sabah to receive the award for a well-managed forest under the Malaysian Timber Certification Scheme that has been given international recognition under the Pan-European Forest Certification PEFC Scheme. This achievement by KDS should therefore be a challenge to all other long-term licenses that they must follow suit and vigorously lest they be the sole uncertified licensee, embarrassed and outcasted, rejected and isolated. The key to success of the FMUs lies in the level of belief, conviction and adherence to what's been put into practice at the Dharamakot Forest Reserve, their ultimate model. Uh, in in Dharamakot, uh, we've actually proven that the uh, tropical rainforest can be managed. Uh, the forest management activities, as demonstrated uh, in Dharamakot, fulfills the uh, requirements of the three main pillars for forest certification. The first step under the comprehensive harvest plan is the forest zoning to take place, indicating where timber production is allowed and what areas are for conservation. There are 135 compartments at Dharamakot covering a total area of 55,139 hectares. Without the FMU concept, and if the government has no resources to expand Dramakot on its own on a massive scale, we will have a situation of degeneration. In the heart of a well-managed forest is the use of the reduced impact logging method in the production of timber. The method is based on selective felling and retention of adequate residual stocking for subsequent cutting cycles to ensure sustainable management practices. The use of tractors, for instance, is very much restricted in order to reduce damage and disturbance to the soil and the possibility of future regeneration of trees. The path of tractors is very destructive. Hence, they are allowed to operate only on non-steep areas. For rugged terrain, only long-distance cable crane logging is allowed, using the log fisher tractor, for instance, for harvesting of particular trees selected beforehand by forestry officials. The skid trails at each logging site on which tractors are allowed to operate are carefully marked out by the officials to reduce damage and disturbance. The alignment of feeder roads on which logging trucks come in to transport the logs away are also carefully marked out prior to the commencement of log harvest. Then comes the next step of giving the right treatment to the logged over areas. The Sylvie culture treatment is practiced in Sabah in the form of selective liberation of potential crop trees the removal of overhead shade, and the cutting of vines and climbing bamboos. The blanket elimination of secondary species and non-commercial species is avoided. We also do civiculture or forest tending and enrichment planting, which serves to improve the forest ecosystems. Forest harvesting operations in all FMUs are closely monitored by periodic aerial surveys and ground surveillance to curb illegal activities like poaching, non-compliance to terms and conditions, and encroachment. This enables field staff to have frequent comparisons between planned programs and actual achievements. Recording and reporting of these achievements by the district forestry officers to the director of forestry are done on a regular basis, thus establishing a basis for transparent accountability of the management of the FMUs. They are on the right track. They are being audited independently. It's not just the forestry department that is watching them or checking them out on whether they have complied or otherwise. We have independent third-party auditing covering each and every one of them. And this started just this year. So the element of transparency is there. The license conditions are very, very stiff. They are transparent. What they have to do is written. What they cannot do is written. And when, what you assess them on is what is written and has already been 
agreed upon prior to the assessment, which means it is a very fair system. It's an open book system. Anybody can look at the management plan. Anybody can look at the compliance report. And we have all this addressed and written and published in our annual reports and of course in our seminars, conferences that we carry out. Planting of fast-growing trees on a large scale is an important component of ongoing plans to establish industrial tree plantations in designated areas within the FMUs. The species planted differ from one FMU to another, depending on site conditions, the efficient supply of the required seedlings and ultimate end uses. The FMU, administered by the Sabah Forest Industries in the Sipitang district, has seedlings nurtured at its own nursery. Once ready, they are being transported to the fields for planting. Species there include Acacia mangium and Eucalyptus grandis. The Sabah Foundation is the biggest producer of timber from industrial tree plantations, followed closely by Sabah Forest Industries, which operates its own pulp and paper mill in Sipitang. Forestry operations are very important to the pulp and paper industry as raw material, that is the fibrous raw material is a very important resource. We at SFI are complying and will comply with all aspects of planting, harvesting with a special emphasis on environmental aspect of our operations and thus we will contribute to the sustainability of the forest management. We are specifically committed to the success of FMU in Sabah. In the case of the plantations at the Sugalud Lokan Forest Reserve, operated by the KTS Plantation, the species include mahogany, laran, binuang, kapur, falcataria, marawan siput jantan, nyato, and jalutong, amongst others. The emphasis is on maintaining biodiversity at the landscape level. At this FMU, as well as at the others in the state, young plants are subject to damage and destruction by animals such as elephants and deer. Here, the manager of the planting and planning division of KTS Plantation gives his experience in dealing with this human and animal conflict. In early 1996, we planted the ITP area. So, after 10 years, we're facing a lot of this wildlife problem, especially elephant and then there are some deer. So the elephant will chew up the, the bark of the rubber and then the some deer will take all the shoot, young shoot on the rubber tree or the planted, planted area. So later part, we try to solve up the problem. We did a lot of fencing, we did a lot of trial to make somebody wash air during the night time and then we fence up the tree, the, the, the area also, but we f we're facing the same problem. But so now later stage, we try to shut up the problem to minimize the problem. We put the worker there to put the resident there to stay there, where we plant, where we stay. For the FMU at the Sugalud Lokan Forest Reserve, now being certified as a well-managed forest, it covers a total area of 57,277 hectares, zoned into 70 compartments. Out of them, 43 compartments are for industrial tree plantations. The rest are for natural forest management, conservation and research. We must remember that ownership remains with the government, the land, the forest, even the trees which are planted by the licensee belong to the government of Sabah. But when they harvest and when they sell these trees, they must pay whatever fees, royalties, premium and so on that are applicable before they can remove and dispose of this timber, including those timbers that they have planted. So everything belongs to the government. What we have given them is the security of tenure so that they, with that security of tenure, they are able to invest in the long term. The forestry department ensures that the necessary measures to protect the forest environment are being carried out through the FMUs. Steps are taken to minimize any negative impact of their operations to natural forest environment, 
whereby other values such as biodiversity, watershed, and ecology are not unduly impaired. The mission of the World Wide Fund, or WWF, is to stop the degradation of the planet's natural environment and to build a future in which humans live in harmony with nature. A senior official of the WWF in Malaysia who has had long experience in observing the state of rainforests in Sabah gives his views. On a personal note, I've had the advantage of being able to see forestry and forest management over 30 years or more now. And one lesson, one important lesson that's come out is that not a single species, as far as we know, not a single species, whether it's a vertebrate animal or an insect or a plant, has gone extinct as a result of logging. That's important to know because it means that uh, we, if, if we have uh, sustainable forest management with forest management plans, uh, we, we know that species will not go extinct. That doesn't mean that there won't be changes. Uh, we can see very clearly that after logging of a forest, the proportion of some species goes up and some species goes down. So for example, orchids or rare tree species, the numbers of individuals might go down, but logging doesn't cause their extinction. On the other hand, things like elephants in particular, numbers, uh, I won't say numbers have gone up in Sabah, but the numbers elef of elephants that a particular forest area can sustain may be higher now because there's plenty of lush growth that they feed on. Even orangutans that we know now after 30 years of observation, we know that uh, high population densities of orangutans are linked more partic to particular soil types rather than logging or no logging or intensity of logging. So that means that with these long-term management plans in place, one thing we can be sure of, species will not go extinct. The Darama Cot management team, like those of other FMUs, has established and maintained a good and close relationship with local communities. They conduct regular meetings with community leaders to discuss and act on various old and new issues pertaining to forest management. The FMUs continue to provide employment to local communities through planting of trees and other forms of work. Through engagement with communities, licenses and the government itself, the Forestry Department is actually giving employment to these communities to come in to work in various aspects of forest management like doing civic culture work, planting of trees, renting of boundaries, so on and so forth. We are happy to note that we are able to reduce the level of poverty through the engagements with communities. For example, if the poverty rate for Sabah is considered as 950 ringgit or so per household, by engaging two people from one household and giving them an income of say 1500 ringgit a month, that uh, totals up to about 3000, you are able to eliminate poverty in that one household instantly. And how much they earn each month is dependent on how hard they work. Bigger area which is treated, then their income will be higher. That's one aspect of it. The other thing is the infrastructure development that comes about as a consequence of forest management, roads, water supply. We look after water supplies. We arrange for piping systems, for the gravity system, for example for water to flow down from uh, certain catchments directly to the village. We recruit the best of them, send them to our training school, where they are then re-employed by the FMU licenses. So that's the socio-economic part of it. Not only the local communities benefit from the FMU system of forest management, but the state and the government as a whole would gain as well. And the good thing about this FMU system and long-term license agreements is that nature, social and environment are incorporated together. The bottom line of people, planets and profits as some people call it. So what it means if this system continues, the state can enjoy not only the environmental benefits of uh, biodiversity, but the other environmental benefits, say, of good water supplies. So a forest management unit can play its role in protecting water quality. And linked to that is this area where we, we sort of merge the, the two. We're merging environmental and in economic sustainability. Carbon will be inevitably, one way or another, an important element of the forest management system in the long term, in that Sabah is roughly 50% forest, roughly 50% FMU. And that means as it regenerates back again, 
it will serve as a big repository of carbon dioxide. So there's both a, an, a globally important element and the prospect, as yet unrealized, but the prospect of Sabah uh, accruing income from uh, its role in, in absorbing and sustaining, or uh, let me say, um, securing carbon locked up in the forests. And the head of the forestry department in Sabah agrees and sees long-term gains for the state and the country. Com and how does the government of Sabah earn or gain from this policy? If there is no FMU licensee to do the work, that means the government has to carry it out. This involves a lot of resources, funding, people, infrastructure, so on and so forth. Instead of putting money into other areas which will be more important in terms of poverty eradication, money has to go into the development, the protection, the restoration of forests. By having licensees there, the burden is shared. That means the government is saving on allocations and it can divert its allocations to where it's really needed. In the long term, when we start harvesting the trees that we plant, or we harvest from forests that have been treated, the government again gains. If all goes well as planned, we reckon that Sabah will get an income of not less than half a billion a year directly in terms of royalties and revenue. And maybe this will go up with time as products increase in prices as we create a niche for ourselves, as we are seen as the place that has the best governance in forest management in the tropics, all those will have a positive effect. It will be a virtuous cycle that will attract more people to come to Sabah to buy our timber products simply because they come from forests which are well managed. What's ahead for the FMUs? Allow the head of the forestry department to sum up the prospects of this unique forest management scheme that has thus far produced very positive results. So come 2014, all goes well, and Sabah will have the largest area of certified forest in the tropics. And this is something which we're aiming for. And um, our approach is we want a niche market. We want to be a branded good. We want to be a Gucci, we want to be a Rolex, we don't want to be like anybody else. We're simply too small to compete on the basis of size. We must instead compete on the basis of governance and compete on the basis of good quality work on the ground. Why FMU? Because that is the best system there is for Sabah. And we're very proud of this. The state government is conscious of the rising demands by the local, national and international communities to have effective measures to protect natural forests from damage due to either human or natural causes. Now that the FMU policy and system has been proven to be successful and effective over time, the Sabah state government shall move vigorously ahead to ensure that additional partners are found so that this crucial mission to manage the rainforest well and according to internationally accepted standards shall spread further. This we shall do for the long-term benefits of the state and its people, now and for generations to come.